Hello students! Thanks for watching this video from your Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra. My name is Matt Neil Miller. I play the French horn, and I'm actually the principal horn of the Eastern Connecticut Symphony. In today's video, I'd like to talk to you about my path to becoming a classical musician. I'd like to give you some active listening techniques so that you can enjoy music even more, and we'll finish off with some basic practice techniques that you can use on the French horn or any instrument. A little bit about me, I grew up in Illinois, not Chicago, but the southern parts, the, amidst lots of cornfields, and uh, I grew up in a primarily non-musical family. I was the only person that enjoyed practicing and listening to music. Uh, of, um, in my immediate family and all my aunts, uncles, grandparents, I was pretty much the, 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 the strange one. Uh, like you, I probably, I started playing the French horn in the fifth grade, but I had been singing in choir before that and playing some piano before that. Uh, in the fifth grade, I had the option to choose amongst many instruments, but I chose the horn because I liked the sound. I had heard the sound previously in movies like Star Wars and other places, and I just gravitated towards it. And, and whatever instrument you gravitate towards is totally fine. It's important that we choose an instrument that we can express ourselves and feels like it comes from our, from our own personal voice. I really liked it. I took to it pretty early. Uh, in about the sixth and seventh grade, I started taking private lessons and I started practicing. And practicing is the most important thing. Anything you want to get better at, be it French horn, piano, singing, shooting free throws, practice, practice, practice is the most important. Now, there's a little bit of a myth going around that to be a classical musician, you have to only like classical music. And that could not be any more wrong. Uh, growing up, growing up, I listened to all sorts of music. I listened to uh, groups like Blues Travelers, Chicago, Smashing Pumpkins, Nirvana, Green Day, Boys to Men, Fuji's, rap music. Goodness, I listened to Broadway music. I listened to mo movie soundtracks, and of course, I listened to classical music as well. Uh, my mom likes to joke that uh, growing up, everything was on our radio except for country music. We had presets for every different type of music that uh, just to, to suit whatever mood uh, hit us in the moment. And often music is used as a background to our lives. Uh, we often use music to make us feel a certain way. If we're having a good day, we like to listen to upbeat, peppy music that makes us feel happy. And when we're feeling sad, we tend to gravitate towards slower, mellower music that may you know, settle our mood and may cause us to reflect on our feelings. While this is all good, any, any type of music listening is good, but I'd like to give you some active listening techniques that can help you focus in and really take a deep dive, try to discover what it is about this particular piece of music that speaks to you. So, any, uh, this can be a happy song, a sad song, any type of song that you would feel comfortable listening to on repeat. And if you find yourself uh, listening to, uh, to a favorite song, that's a candidate for some active listening. Now, to do active listening, I'd like you to put your song on repeat and listen to it one, one time through, focusing on just either the melody line or the vocals of the piece. Really focus in and listen carefully to what makes that performance special, whether it's something that the, uh, the singer brings that really speaks to you, or if it's just something in the melody that's particularly haunting or or upbeat that really get, really gets your really gets you going. Listen to the highest point alone. Now, after it goes to repeat, press pause, and we're going to on the next time through repeat. Listen to just the drums. I want you to try to put the melody line that you've just been uh, focusing on to the side, and just listen to what's underneath it: the pulse, the rhythm, the bass drum, the snare drums, anything that's giving you the giving you the pulse, the beat behind it and focus just on the drums this next time through. After you've uh, gone back and uh, hit the repeat button again, you, you're able to isolate both the melody and the drums, and I'd like you now to focus on the bass line, which is, I would say, the lowest part of the song that you can sing along. And this is, this is kind of fun. See if you can sing along to the bass line alone. Like it's usually a simpler melody that tends to repeat, but just see if you, can, if you can isolate that melody and hum along. After you've done that, you are pretty, you're a pretty advanced uh, active listener. If you're able to isolate the melody, the bass line, 
the drums, you're doing great. On the, the next couple of repeat signs, I'd like you to switch between those two. Try to, try to listen between all three, but then pick out the fun stuff in between. Try to listen to if there are any other instruments in between spicing up the music. If there are any accompanimental voices, try to pick them out. Basically, the more you can bring concentration into your uh, listening to music, the more you can really get to what makes that piece of music special to you. Listening, when you're able to focus in and really hear all the little things that make that spe music special to you, you'll appreciate it even more. Now, we're going to talk about some basic practice techniques uh, for a piece that's pretty special to me. This is a piece of music called Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks. Now, Till Eulenspiegel was quite the little character back in the day. In the 16th century, they had a uh, publication that they called the Chapbook, which was basically uh, like a 30 to 40 page uh, n novelette that had pictures and little, uh, little uh, captions to go with the pictures. It's basically the 16th century version of a comic book. And Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks was a chapbook, a comic book, about this guy that got into all sorts of trouble. I'm not going to spoil the story for you, but he's basically everything your teachers and parents don't want you to be. He's kind of a cautionary tale. And uh, in the, uh, uh, about in later in the 19th century, a guy named Richard Strauss wrote a piece called Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks about the life and times, the troubles, and ultimate... Uh, <laughs> When, uh, when Till Eulenspiegel is captured by the authorities. It's basically a, uh, a, cap uh, a snapshot of all of the adventures that he gets into, uh, musically done. And to start the piece, the French horn gets to be Till Eulenspiegel. We get to pl play Till Eulenspiegel's melody as he comes out and begins playfully uh, causing terror um, amongst his friends and co-workers. So, I'd like to give you a practice cheese sheet as we learn this opening melody from Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks together. When practicing anything on the French horn or a piano or a vocal parts alone, I'd like you to first hear and play the fundamentals. Learn every single note very, very slowly and learn how they fit together, one. Then once you have all the notes and rhythms, start incorporating them slowly and gradually speed up. Once you have those two things together, the third thing you need to do to be, a, uh, to be a performing musician is practice the art of performing. And you do that by playing for friends and loved ones, basically trying to get out there and put yourself out there as much as you can. But let's go through these steps piece by piece. To start, let's hear and play the fundamentals of this melody. As you're looking at it, it's basically comprised of a very simple opening melody that kind of gets tossed around in interesting ways. G, C, D, D sharp, E, and that gets repeated over the next coming measures. Let's make sure we can hear and sing them alone. Yeah, yeah, it sounds pretty good. I've got the, the melody in my ear and in my, in my, uh, in my heart, as you will. Uh, if you're playing a brass instrument, it also helps to take the mouthpiece off and buzz these notes alone. Hey, once you've done that, you're pretty well along. You're, you're able to hear and play the fundamentals, the music, the, uh, the notes rather, and the basic rhythms of this piece. And now it's time to start incorporating a basic pulse, a basic rhythm to put the piece together. I like to go to my handy dandy metronome, which is on my phone, but you can have a, a, a standalone metronome, and put on a nice and slow tempo. What's good about this piece of music is that it actually starts slow and gradually speeds up. The, in the upper left hand corner you can see the German word gemachlich, which means leisurely. It starts at a nice slow tempo and gradually speeds up to lebhaft, or lebhafter, which means lively. So we'll start at a nice leisurely tempo of 66. And we'll play the notes and melody as they come. Yeah, that felt 
felt pretty good. At this point, I'd repeat this at 66 several times, making sure I feel very, very, very comfortable with it. But for the sake of argument, we'll just speed up a little bit and I'll show you what a half speed tempo will be. Ultimately, we're gonna go from 66 to a nice fast performance tempo of about 112. And right smack dab in the middle is about 85. As I'm practicing this, I'll take it from 66 and speed it up to maybe 70, then 74, 78. Nice couple, uh, a nice couple of uh, slow steps in between, just to make sure I'm comfortable with this at all tempi. So here's 85. Sounds pretty good, right? All right, let's do this at the performance tempo. This will be the performance tempo for the Volus Zeitmos, the second section, which basically is at that lively tempo. Ser Lebhaft, the thing you can see in the, uh, the middle of that second line means always lively. Yeah, so that's an example of the type of practicing I like to do. I like to start very, very slow, half speed, even slower than half speed, and gradually speed it up to a nice performance tempo. Once I have all of that under control, I'll begin the, the act of performing. I'll practice the act of performing. If we were to play this piece, which you can actually listen to on YouTube, I'll, I'll include some links to your, to your teacher. Uh, if we were to play this piece in orchestra, I would play this opening solo for my wife, for my coworkers, for basically anyone that's around me with the, with, with the French horn, just so I can get the, the habit and the act of performing that underneath my belt. Whatever small performances you can do for your friends, loved ones, band director, will make you feel more comfortable when it comes time to actually play the piece in a concert. So, if you would, I'd like to play for you this opening solo in a miniature performance right now on this video. Here's what the solo sounds like in context. Oops. I'm pretty happy with that. And again, as I'm practicing this and playing for this for loved ones, I'll get more and more comfortable. So those are some basic practice techniques for you. Starting slow, hearing and playing the fundamentals. Starting slow and speeding up as speeding up to performance tempo. And then practicing the art of the act of performing. Now, don't forget, anyone can become a classical musician. If I can become a classical musician, anyone can. But it takes a lot of practice and a lot of active listening, a lot of incorporating music into your life. Really dig deep and enjoy the music that speaks to you. Thanks so much for watching this uh, video from the Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra. I hope to see you at one of our concerts soon. Bye.